So in this video, we're going to look at how a central bank influences and changes the money supply, a key function of a central bank. Uh, first of all, it may modify the reserve requirements of commercial banks. So for instance, by lowering the proportion of liquid assets that a bank must retain. Um, remember that banks retain liquid assets such as cash, such as notes and coins, in case people want to withdraw their cash from the bank, uh, and so the bank is able to meet its liabilities. Now, if you lower the proportion of liquid assets um, that it needs to retain, then the bank will be able to lend out more, and it'll increase the money multiplier effect, and it'll increase the money supply, such as M4, a broad definition of the money supply. Okay. Similarly, the other way around, you could increase the proportion of liquid assets the bank keeps and therefore it's able to lend out less and that will then reduce the money supply. Okay. So modifying reserve requirements is a key area. The second key area is changing short-term interest rates. So, the discount rates that central banks charge commercial banks for lending overnight or for a, for a brief period of time, by lowering the discount rate, for example, then basically they're effectively increasing liquidity and therefore banks are able to um, borrow more cheaply in the short term, therefore that increases the money supply and increases economic activity. But it could be the other way around, they could increase the discount rate and that will reduce liquidity, reduce the money supply and reduce economic activity, other things being equal. So changing the discount rate is a key way that the bank can control the money supply. However, the third method, um, which is important, is open market operations. Um, so to start with, Open market operations are where the central bank prints money. So it doesn't have to physically print notes and coins, it can create this money electronically. And then it can buy short term government stock, short term treasuries. Okay. And so, in exchange for short term treasuries, it provides cash. And the cash then is circulated in the economy and becomes new bank deposits which then increases the money supply. So basically they're increasing the monetary base, MO, as a measure of the monetary base and a narrow measure of the money supply and then that results in an overall increase in the money supply. Um, another mechanism by which this happens is the bank prints money by short-term treasuries. It increases the cash um, in bank reserves. So there's an increase in bank reserves. Um, if you increase bank reserves, there will be less demand for overnight or short-term borrowing in the money markets. So short-term interest rates will fall. Okay, and then that will have an expansionary effect. Of course, it could work um, the other way around. And a key question is, um, so what they do is they buy back short-term treasuries to reverse the process. Yeah. Um, now a question might be, is this not a bit like quantitative easing? See the video on quantitative easing. But just to explain the difference, quantitative easing introduced by the Bank of Japan really in the 1990s is when the central bank in this case, prints money, okay, but buys longer term debt, such as 10-year government bonds, 20-year government bonds. Okay. It even buys potentially mortgage-backed securities. And these are securities of long duration, and quantitative easing has a bigger impact and is designed to affect the overall economy in terms of boosting economic activity. So the main difference is it's longer term debt rather than short term debt. Okay, thank you for watching.